Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm the biotech girl and in this video I will be talking about GMOs. More particularly, what are they? Are, and are they good? Are they bad? And also I will cover the very simplified steps in which they're created. Let's get started. So genetically modified organism, or shortly put uh, GMO, is um, simply put an organism which has uh, modified genes and it does not na occur naturally uh, as such in the environment. And so far we managed to uh, genetically modify microorganisms, plants and animals. And um, genes were transferred um, within a species or between two species or even between kingdoms. Now, why would we even want to modify the naturally occurring organisms? Well, the reason is that the GMOs can help us develop a more sustainable agriculture. For example, we can create crops which are resistant to drought, or we can create more nutritious food or increase the shelf life of the food. And besides for food, GMOs can also help us develop uh, drugs such as insulin uh, on a much larger scale and can also help us treat the genetic g diseases. A less known fact is that we can also create oncolytic virus, which can um, target and infect and kill cancer cells. Kill cancer cells. The steps to create GMOs are, first, we have to identify the gene responsible for the desired characteristic. Then we copy that gene and insert it into another organism, which then becomes GMO, and we allow it to grow in suitable conditions. And we get a plant frog. <laughs> I'm kidding, the result is much less dramatic than that. One popular example would be the golden rice, which um, is made of, well, regular rice. Um, the only difference being that the, it contains uh, large amounts of uh, beta carotene, which is then converted into vitamin A. The ultimate goal was to prevent um, deaths due to vitamin A deficiency. There are different ways to insert the gene, but most commonly used ones are a gene gun, in which you use a laboratory gun to fire the DNA into the cells that you want to genetically modify. Then there's microinjection, which is most used to create GM animals, in which the DNA is directly transferred into the cell nucleus. Electroporation, which disturbs the cell membrane, making it more permeable so that the DNA can pass through more easily or through the use of so-called viral vectors that can infect the target cell and deliver the gene of interest. This seemingly simple process, it has so much research surrounding it, so like we have to find out the exact DNA sequence of the gene that uh, is responsible for the particular trait, then we have to find out which organism is best suited to express the gene, and we have to know them appropriate supporting genetic um, elements which are required for the modification to be successful. Uh, we also have to know relevant epigenetics for that section of the DNA. For example, if the gene is being um, uh, inserted in a different location of the same DNA of the organism, then we would have different uh, expression of the gene and we also have to confirm that the insertion itself has uh, been successful. Considering that we can develop this technology to make people's lives better, why wouldn't we? Some of the most common concerns about GMOs are that they're not natural, that they can spread and make everything modified, or that they are unhealthy. Firstly, I would like to say that the GMOs may not occur naturally, but their newly inserted genes do, just in a different organism. The spread to other organisms can be prevented by making the GMOs unable to reproduce or by creating a so-called buffer zone around the GMO with which it cannot reproduce. Perhaps the biggest concern, the health aspect of the GMOs, can be addressed by having a peace of mind that before a GMO is actually approved as a food product, they must go through rigorous assessments to prove that they are safe. In fact, you can check the link in the description of the video for some more information. Lastly, one of the most recent breakthroughs in this technology is the development of molecular mechanisms to make edits of the DNA using the CRISPR system, but I will leave that for another video. For now, you can watch this video if you want to learn some tricks on how to study more effectively, or click here if you haven't subscribed yet, so you don't miss out on my next videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.